name is DJ Baptiste, and uh, I was born in Lacombe, Louisiana. My, I was raised by my grandmother. I was born to a 14-year-old mom and a 16-year-old dad, so they were young. They really weren't able to make too many decisions. I was very defiant, though. I, I hated I loved to get in trouble because of the getting in trouble got your attention. That was the type of student where I loved attention, so, and I did whatever it took to get attention. I, I was the leader of a gang. And let me tell you why, because in a gang, we got a sense of security and a sense of belonging. We feel like these my homies, they, they gonna take care of me, they got me, no matter what. So they give us that sense of belonging. Fight, fight, that was our only option. We had a disagreement, we fought. We, whether we playing basketball, playing high and go seek, it didn't matter. If it's a disagreement, we fight. So I was raised like that, and that's how I, that was instilled in my head. It was no other option. You fight, you fight, you fight. You got to be violent, violent. And and and, and we didn't. We, I'm gonna tell you, we like to fight in school because we know we had a crowd, so we continue to get kicked out of school. We jump people. I mean, just just so much violent. I never never was a second thought. When it came to my head, that's what I did. If I wanted to fight, boom, I'm fighting. If you're close enough where I can put my hands on you, I'm hitting you in your mouth. That's just how I was. I did go to juvenile twice. My name is Donna Porter, and I teach public speaking at Picking Memorial High School in Picking, Mississippi. I knew. I sat back and thought about it. When you when you late to something, everybody looks at you. And all of a sudden, the door flings open, and this huge student that I've never seen in my life walks in and says, what's up? And she looked and I said, what's up? You know, and the, I, I just had the attention of the class that fast. My first thought is, why did this happen to me? On the first day of school when I'm trying to set the tone. And then I thought, I've got this. Thank goodness I've got this. But to be able to access my brilliance, I have to take a deep breath, stay composed, and watch him look at his nonverbal language because all behavior is purposeful. She said, well, I noticed you're late to my room. There's no problem because you probably couldn't find it. I just kind of looked at it with this crazy look like, yeah, whatever. And then she was like, well, have a seat. And I looked at it, I said, do you have any kids? And I said, well, actually, um, your name is DJ, Mr. Baptiste. I have two. and." I just informed the class about it, but because you missed my room, you didn't hear. So are you married, he said. And I said, actually, I just told the class I've been married for 30 years. I stepped back and said, 30 years? Folded my arms, looked up and down and said, don't you think it's time for a change? Now, at that point in time right there, I expected her to get red in the face, lose her composure, run to her desk, get a referral, write me up and send me out. I was ready for that. That's what I expected. And now that I, I've learned the brain seeks patterns. So I, that was the pattern that my brain was seeking. You be disrespectful, you get sent out of class, but you get the attention that you want. She didn't do that. She looked at me, she smiled and said, Do you go to the doctor when you're well? And he looked at me very funny and said, no, you go when you're sick. I said, do you come to school when you know everything? He said, I guess not. I guess you come supposedly to learn. I said, well, you've got a lot to learn and I can't wait to teach you. And then I left him with that feeling of angst. And then I said, you know what I noticed more importantly about you? You have charisma. Charisma? You know, she was like, do you know what that means? I said, I'm cute. And everybody in the class laughed and she was like, Something like that. She was like, but you just know how to work a room, you know? And I said, I, I was just listening to her. She was like, she threw me off because she started talking good about me after I wanted her to be kind of get into a power struggle with me. That's what I wanted. And I said, so I've been thinking in the last few seconds, I give jobs to my students in high school. Do you know anything about jobs in school? He said, oh yeah, in kindergarten, I was the line leader. I said, mm, we don't have a line leader in high school but we have appropriate jobs. And I usually take a week or so to figure out what job would best fit what student. I do a multiple intelligence survey and we tell a little bit about ourselves, but you know what, DJ? I don't need to do all that with you because you're innately designed to be a greeter. He's like, a greeter, what's that? And I said, a greeter is someone that will stand at my door every morning. As everybody come in, I get to shake everybody's hand, appropriately hug the girls. That threw my mind off. And then she said, on top of that, I get to come in front of her class and have my own session for two to three minutes. How does that sound? 
That's what she said. I said, it sounds too good to be true, so let me run it back to you. I said, so you, you mean to tell me I get to stand outside your classroom, shake everybody's hand who comes by, then on top of that, I get to come in front of the class to have my own session? She was like, yeah. I said, well, I want to, I want, you know what I'm saying, I want to try this. She was like, but it's one catch. And I remember I dropped my head like I knew I knew it was something, you know. All you have to do is be on time. Because if you're my greeter, that means you have to be the first one here so everybody get a chance to see you and shake your hand before they walk in my classroom. And I just remember shaking my head like, all right, I try this, you know. I, I see what it's something, it's something here. I don't, I can't tell yet, but it was something there. And I just remember thinking, I try this. And she said, okay, pick up your backpack that you threw down and go have a seat. And that was the first day of my new life. Day two, I'm standing in the hall and I see this mass of people just parting. And the only figurative language I can think of is Moses parting the Red Sea. And here comes this huge guy. And I hear these words that are so important for anybody watching this video. Everybody move out of my way. I've got to get to Miss Porter's class on time because listen, I have a job to do. I have a job to do. A disconnected child is a discouraged child. He needed to be encouraged and every day he stood from day two. He had been in the criminal justice center. He had been expelled from the alternative school. He had been in school out isolation, out of school suspension. Nothing worked. All he needed was to be encouraged. And he became my greeter. We usually have jobs just every nine weeks, but by a unanimous vote of the class, he became the year long greeter because they felt nobody could do the job as well as DJ. I feel like the experiences that I went through in my life was meant to happen so I can come back and help kids, help teachers understand. I feel like the, I have a gift that I need to share, a testimony that I would like to share, and I know I can help kids along with teachers. I, oftentimes teachers get into it with students, they have problems with students because they don't have the skills. And I feel like anytime I can help a teacher get the skills, she has a chance to save a life. And I, also, I, I often tell teachers, I want you to have the same success story that Ms. Porter had. I want you to have that student that you walk down the aisle with to that graduation. I want you to have that student that say he owes his life to you.